So we'll start with a um, presentation about transportation with Mrs. Banco. Is it okay to take the mask down while I'm presenting? Thank you. As I was getting ready for tonight's presentation, it occurred to me that every year I do something about safety. So I thought I'd mix it up a little this year and I thought long and hard and I realized that everything we do in our department is safety related. Every decision we make from training to the type of bus we purchase, to the options we order, to the way we talk to our kids, to the way we train our kids is all safety related. So tonight's presentation again is on a focus on safety. I thought I'd let, uh, let you know about some of the initiatives we're doing this year, some of the trainings we're doing. Um, the first thing that we do every year, the state ed department requires um, three bus drills every year. And in addition to that, we do something at the GLP actually that Mrs. Carter uh, suggested a few years ago. And we go in the first, usually the first Friday of the school year and we go into the classroom and we have a video presentation. It's actually a Disney video that was designed for bus safety. And it was made back in the late eighties, early nineties. But all of the topics that it covers and the way that it, it teaches the kids are super appropriate for the kindergarten and preschool age group. And it is Winnie the Pooh and his friends and they go on an adventure because Christopher Robin forgot his lunch at home and they get on a school bus and they go to the school and they realize that Christopher Robin didn't forget his lunch. He left a surprise for them. And then they go back home and it talks about crossing and sitting properly and everything that we need to know for a school bus. So we invite the parents into this every year and we do it in, the, in one of the rooms at the GLP. And each classroom comes in at their own designated time and the whole program takes about 40 minutes. So we start in the classroom and you'll see from these pictures that this was actually from a couple years ago that we took these photos because none, the, none of the kids are wearing masks. Um, but we go out at when we're done in the classroom and we go on a school bus and we talk to the kids about the safety procedures on the bus holding the hand railing and sitting in their seats and those types of things. And they go on a short bus ride pretty much around the block. And when we come back to the GLP, they practice getting off. We have a bus attendant on the bus now with, with the kids and the teacher is on the bus. And the kiddos in this picture are practicing taking their giant steps out in front of the bus so they can see the bus driver. So it's a program that we started um, three or four years ago. We've been doing it every year. The kids and the teachers seem to like it. We get a pretty good turnout from the parents that come in and, and experience it. And the neat thing is that it, it hits the kids at the beginning of the school year when, when they're just beginning to start to ride the bus. And it also educates the kids who don't normally ride a bus because a lot of our little guys don't typically ride a bus. So it's a good opportunity for them all to get on a school bus and see what it's all about. The, the next thing we did this year, so the state ed department also requires every year that there are four hours of training. And the state ed department provides three of those hours because they want every bus driver and every attendant throughout New York State to get the same training. So they provide us with a, a, a book and the curriculum, the, the DVD or the flash drive, and they dictate what we teach for three of those four hours every year. And the other hour is ours to do what we want with it. So this year we focused on emergency procedures, um, different types of emergencies. What if there's a, a electric line down on your bus? Um, you know, what if you're in a flood? What if there are trees down? When would you evacuate the bus? What do you do if you have a disabled student that can't get off the bus? Where would you go if you need to evacuate the kids? So we did that as our hour of individual training this year. And thanks to help from a smoke machine from the Eden Fire Department, we were able to simulate what it would be like to be in a, a bus that's on fire. It actually takes a school bus less than two minutes to become fully engulfed in flames. So two minutes is, is okay if it's a driver and a couple kids on the bus, but put 50 kids on a bus or put a kid who's confined to a wheelchair on a bus, two minutes is nothing. So we practiced, um, there's a couple pictures there um, uh, with the smoke machine. And we practiced after our training uh, in the classroom here and went outside and all the drivers and the attendants were on the school bus and they got to experience what it would feel like to have that bus start filling with smoke. 
I had gotten a few mannequins from the high school that they use for CPR training, and I put those on the bus as extra students. Little guys might tend to hide under a seat, so I, I put some, a couple of them under the seat. I put a couple in the seats. I put a couple in the seat belts. And the drivers knew who each other was, but they also needed to be looking out for the kids that they might not know where they're hiding if, if a little guy was hiding under a seat. So in, you can see in this second picture, this is when the bus was only about halfway full of smoke. And already, even though you know it's not real smoke, it was very um, alarming and disconcerting to be on a bus that's filling with smoke. So people are already getting up and trying to get off the bus. The person you see in the back with the, the um, black jacket and the gray uh, hoodie is our, she was our bus driver. She's actually one of our bus attendants, but she was playing the bus driver. So the bus driver's role is to be the last one off the bus and make sure everybody's off safely. So she's going through now and she's making sure everybody's off. We practiced on where, where you would send the kids, what's a safe location, um, how do you determine the right place to send the kids, how do you keep them organized, how do you keep them calm. So we, we did that and there she is at the end um, after she had gotten out of the back of the bus. Really neat exercise, it was something we haven't had the opportunity to do before. And when we were finished with that, I have, um, each one of our keys, every school district, I think, does it the same way. And every key has this really attractive key ring on it that's actually a seatbelt cutter. And we've not had an opportunity in the past to actually, I've been here 15 years, I've never used a seatbelt cutter. So all of the drivers were given a cutter and we have a, a bus out there that's ready to be used for parts. So we scavenged the seatbelts and we practiced because if you go straight across, it doesn't cut so nice. You have to go at an angle. So. Everybody had an opportunity to do an emergency evacuation, see what it would feel like to be in a bus that was full of smoke, try to find the kids that are hiding or might not be able to get out on their own and use the seatbelt cutter to really see how to use it and, and experiment with it. So great reviews from the drivers and the attendants, something that we'd like to expand on and, and do in depth even more, but a really great first start. And that was our first, um, our portion of the state ed refresher for this fall. We also have a great partnership with the Department of Homeland Security. They have a transportation security administration that does surface transportation. We started a partnership with them three or four years ago before COVID um, shut us down for a little while. And I'm not gonna pretend to know what the acronyms stand for, but I know what, the, I know what they mean. So we, we do a CETA exercise. We've done three of them so far. And basically they come in one morning very, very early and they, they watch us. They, they kind of stay off in the, in the shadows and they kind of watch our drivers. They watch how they do their pre-trips. They watch what time they start their pre-trip, um, how long it takes, what time they pull out, all that kind of stuff. And then the next day they come back and they plant backpacks and those backpacks are labeled so we know that they're from the Department of Security. And they plant those on a variety of buses with kind of no rhyme or reason. And then as the drivers finish their pre-trip and they're pulling out of the bus yard, I stop them at the gate over here at the elementary school and I pretend that I'm doing a, a fire extinguisher check and it doesn't take them long to catch on to what's going on. But I stop them and then our guys from Homeland Security talk to them. They ask them if they did a pre-trip. They ask them if they found anything. If they found something, what did they find? What did they do with it? And the, the goal is that everybody's done an effective pre-trip present or pre-trip. Um, they performed an effective pre-trip and they found these bags and they did what they should have with them. So when we started this a few years ago, we did have a few drivers that didn't, didn't find the bags. And as we get through this, we, we've got a 100% pass rate. So everybody's doing what they should. And it kind of started a, a new, kind of a fun exercise, but also educational within the department. I call it the pre-trip challenge. Sometimes I plant something on the bus of my own. Um, it might be as simple as a pencil case and it says to return to me and I'll throw $5 in there or whatever. Um, sometimes in order to include the bus attendants who don't help with the pre-trip, we do um, questions and answers. So there'll be a piece of paper and they can work with the driver. They have a CDL manual to, to reference 
and it's always something something safety related how many how many feet does a kid need to be away from the road before you start moving the bus what do you do at a railroad track something like that so we pool all of the responses and then at the end of the year we do a big drawing for some kind of a prize so um, something fun something that helps us keep keep everybody interested in pre-trip, not that we aren't all interested, but something fun to add to it because doing a pre-trip every single morning, midday and afternoon, um, you can start to fall into a pattern. So it keeps everybody on their toes and it's something that we've continued. So these guys from Homeland Security came in a couple weeks ago and the drivers did really well with it. We also have a, a presentation on Friday from the Department of Homeland Security. They're doing it at the bus garage and it's explosives on the bus. What kind of devices might we see? What are, you know, what, what are the hidden devices? What would we do if we found something? And this is something new to us. So I don't have anything that I can review on it yet, except to say that it's coming up on Friday and we're excited about it. They, do, uh, they will be doing in December, on December 8th here in the elementary auditorium, it's called an Exus workshop and basically it's a tabletop presentation. So they, they demonstrate a variety of intruders on the bus. And then what would you do? How would you handle it? Where might you go? So we have a, a really great building level security plan, but a school bus is very different because we're moving and you can't secure a school bus. There are doors everywhere all of those emergency doors are open so what would you do if somebody tried to get on your bus what would you do if you had a, a suspicious package what would you do if a kid had a gun what would you do if a kid had a knife so these are all of the kinds of things that the Do department of homeland security is working with us on and, and with a multitude of school districts at this point so they'll be coming in in december to work with us on what you might do if you have someone on the bus and finally, with the Homeland Security, we do a program called T-Start. So they came in, I think, three years ago, and they asked us, it seemed like three hours worth of questions on everything from our safety procedures, how do we perform our pre-trips, how, how is our bus lot secured, how do we secure the buses, everything you can think of. And they gave us suggestions, and they're coming back at the end of this December to look at improvements that we made, um, things that we're doing differently, things that we're doing better, things we did really great on that we're continuing with now. So they'll be coming back at the end of December to give us an analysis of, of where we are now. So really great partnership. They include the drivers and the attendants and all of the exercises and um, very grateful that we were able to get in on the ground level of this program. And finally, I wanted to touch on some of the procedures that we do on our buses that share to help uh, protect the kids from COVID and also to reduce the number of quarantines that we need to have because of the bus. One of the things we're doing are assigned seats. So our, our drivers have seating charts and they're honestly a bit of a challenge because we're not like a classroom. Our, we might have 50 or 60 kids on a bus and those kids are, they're fluid. They change every day. Johnny might go to grandma's on Monday and Tuesday, home on Wednesday to Uncle Bob's on Thursday and to Aunt Susie's on Friday. And they're all on different buses. So it's very challenging. It, it probably is the, the biggest challenge for our drivers this year, but they've all been fantastic about it. They have their cheating, seating charts for each day um, and they do their best to, um, to keep track of those seating charts and know who's on the bus because not only do we have the, the fluidity of the kids that are assigned to those buses, but we also have kids who stay after for AEP at the high school for the elementary buses that throw a whole different mix of kids on the bus. So we do have assigned seating. I have a picture here that's kind of hard to see, but this is an example of one of our buses. She has her seats labeled um, starting with A, going back through the bus, and you're assigned to seat A, window seat, or seat A, aisle seat. And the kids know where they need to sit, and they have their seating chart in their route folder. So if a principal calls for uh, COVID contact tracing, we know where to go and who the kids would be. One of the things we're not required to do this year, but that our drivers asked us to continue actually was attendance, and that's been monumental in helping us with the contact tracing. We have attendance sheets that go for a two-week time period. 
So our, our drivers, when the kids get on the bus morning and afternoon, check off the attendance. If a principal needs to um, contact Trace, we're able to see when that kid rode and based on the seating chart, know who that kid would sit next to. And luckily up to this point, um, except for one instance, as long as the kids are wearing their masks, which they all are on the bus, we don't need to be too concerned about contact tracing because it seems to come down to the masks. We are going through a lot of them, a lot of masks this year. The kids seem to forget them when they get on the bus in the morning, but the drivers have a plentiful supply. They always keep them in the, at the front of their bus. So if a kid gets on, they can just grab a mask as they get on. So it's, it's been going very well so far. Um, and that is, that's pretty much it, what, what I have for the presentation. Before I close it off, does anybody have questions about anything I've talked about? All right, so I'm so gonna- So Mary, a couple quick questions. Sure. So how are we doing number of bus drivers? And the only reason why I ask is, I know one of our substitutes, I've seen her home quite often, so I'm hoping that's a good sign. Well, we have, we currently have one substitute well, we have two substitutes right now. One of them is leaving us on Thursday. Our other substitute works only afternoons and only afternoons that she d decides that she's working. So she's home because she chooses okay. not, not to work. So not because we don't have work. Um, that actually brings me to my closing side, so, slide. So we have this really cool A-frame that I'm waiting for somebody to wear and walk around town with. But we, we actually had six people leave us over the, since June between retirements and resignations for other jobs. Um, but we have actually gained some already. And it's all, become, it's all coming from word of mouth. We have two who were just approved. Actually, they're on tonight's agenda. We have one taking his road test on Friday and two more in December and November taking their road tests. So we'll pretty soon be able to combat the deficit we have. And for, for all of the efforts we've made for you know, advertising and everything, it's really coming word of mouth from our current employees, which I take as a great sign that they're willing to bring their friends in. Um, so, so long as we don't have any more retirements, we should get ourselves into a, a good place where we can start to loosen things up a little bit because as I'm sure uh, Mrs. LaRosa and Mrs. Carter can tell you, we're really doing our very, very best right now, but we are, you know, we're struggling. We're, we're a little bit late getting to the elementary school. Things aren't running quite as on time as we want. Kids are not late getting to school, but our buses are really struggling to get from the high school to the elementary on time. So bringing these new people on hopefully will help us um, relax those runs a little bit, add a little bit, uh, you know, so we can get things moving a little bit more smoothly. But for right now, we're getting everybody where they need to be and from where they need to be and doing the very best we can. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so is there a request to withdraw specific items from the consent agenda? No, so let's move on to B. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, consensus items be approved. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? Motion carried. This is the approximate position and time that the board has designated to receive statements from individuals and groups. The board will review all statements then respond appropriately at a future meeting. All persons in attendance are required to sign any attendance sheet and designate their representation status. For example, parent, teacher, bus driver, chamber of commerce, et cetera. There is a two minute time limit. And obviously we have nobody, so. Kelly, Lauren, you're not interested. <clears throat> yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, on to new business. Uh, that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the resignation of bus driver Debbie Greg Gregor be accepted effective October 29th, 2021. The board and administration wish to thank Mrs. Gregor for her two years of service to the district. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstained? Motion carried.
that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the resignation of registered professional nurse Michelle Reynolds be accepted effective November 5th, 2021. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstained? Motion carried. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, Melinda Massa be appointed on probation as a teacher aide effective November 3rd, 2021 and ending May 2nd, 2022. Salary is based upon CSEA contract level four, step one. Second. Any discussion? Uh -oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carried. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, Kimberly English be appointed on probation as a teacher aide, effective November 3rd, 2021, and ending May 2nd, 2022. Salary is based upon CSEA contract, level four, step one. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carried. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, after successfully completing her probationary appointment, Grace Gannon be permanently appointed as a clerk typist effective October 26, 2021. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carried. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, Danielle Gable be approved as a 19A trainer for Eden Central School effective September 7th, 2021. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carried. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, Amanda Patrzynski be appointed on probation as a clerk typist, effective September 1st, 2021 and ending February 28th, 2022. Salary is based upon CSEA contract level five, step one. Now, Mrs. Pachin Kachichinsky was provisionally appointed in August and has a reachable score on the Erie County Civil Service list. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstained? Motion carried. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, Tracy Brown be appointed on probation as a clerk typist effective September 9th, 2021 and ending March 8th, 2022. Salary is based upon CSEA contract level five, step one. No, Mrs. Ms. Brown was provisionally appointed in September and had a reachable score on the Erie County Civil Service list. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstained? Motion carried. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, Billy Joe Beck be appointed as a clerk typist, effective November 12th, 2021, and ending May 11th, 2022. Salary is based upon CSEA contract level five, step one. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? Motion carried. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, Francis Phillips be appointed on probation as a school lunch monitor effective November 12th, 2021 and ending May 11th, 2022. Salary is based upon CSEA contract level two, step three. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstained? Motion carried. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, Allison McKenzie be appointed on probation as a bus driver, effective November 12th, 2021 and ending May 11th, 2022. Salary is based upon CSEA contract level nine, step one. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstained? Motion carried. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, Jeffrey Cott be appointed on probation as a bus driver, effective November 12th, 2021 and ending May 11th, 2022. Salary is based upon CSEA contract level nine, step one. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Motion carried. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, Nancy Elvers be appointed on probation as a cafeteria monitor, effective November 18th, 2021 and ending May 17th, 2022. Salary is based upon CSEA contract level two, step one. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstained? Motion carried. 
that upon the recommendation of the superintendent, bus routes be adjusted as per the schedule effective October 1st, 2021. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstains? Motion carried. <clears throat> Business report. Good evening. I don't have much to report tonight, but what I have is really good news. Thanks to the collaborative effort of Mary Maxson and her team in the Office of Pupil Services, we've been able to reestablish our Medicaid billing, which has been lax for several years due to a um, paperwork issues. So she is able to reestablish that funding stream, which will be very helpful for helping to offset the cost of our high need students. Thank you. Thank you. Superintendent's report. I have a little bit more to report than uh, Mrs. Feldman today, so bear with me. Um, starting off, I just want to give the, the board and the community update on our capital project, um, which, was, which was approved back in December. Our plans have been submitted to the state education department for their review and approval. At this point, we are in wait mode um, and it should take probably another five to six weeks before we hear back from the state education department. There's always a possibility that they ask for some revisions or for some additional information. That's a pretty normal course of action in, in a project as fast as ours. Once we receive that approval, the project will go out for bids. Our expectation is that we will be do doing so in late January or early February, which matches the time frame that we originally talked about way back when we were um, even pre-vote uh, in the planning stages. Uh, so in the interim, the Buildings and Grounds Department will be working on some larger internal projects over the next few months so that we are prepped to start the project next spring. And that's primarily focused on the, uh, the basement in the middle school, high school because we're gonna have some work in those areas. So it's time to do a little bit of spring cleaning, but we'll do it in the winter time instead. Um, an update on the comptroller's audit. As you're aware that the district was audited by the comptroller's office regarding mental health training um, that we are to provide for our staff. Uh, and this is for uh, the uh, last school year. Um, so Mrs. Feldman, Mr. Bliss and I had a meeting with the, the audit team today. They shared their preliminary fi findings and quite frankly, there, were, there really were no surprises. We knew what they were going to find because we know that we were lax in this area. Uh, the comptroller's office will be finalizing their report, which will of course be shared with the board. We do have an opportunity to offer a response. They've already made some suggestions to us um, of things that we should include in the response, um, such as um, discussing how much information was provided to school so we would know exactly what we, we were supposed to do. Um, which was interesting that they shared that with us. Um, so again, that was regarding that mental health training uh, audit for the last school year. And this is an area that, that we can get better, uh, better in and we will. And we are already working on some plans to, to be vastly improved um, in making sure our staff have the information and knowledge that they need to be in the best position they can be to help our kids, okay? So I, I really wanted to focus a good part of my, my, my discussion with you tonight on, on some program updates and program highlights. Um, we are back in action with, with kids in school and, and what comes with that. Um, we know about the academic piece, which is obviously why we're here and, and the most important part, but there's a lot of other, uh, other things that happen in schools um, when we're able to have kids here, when we're able to have programs here. So I just wanna give you a few highlights of things that have happened and some things that are, that are upcoming. Um, our middle school and high school will have a visitor from the district attorney's office uh, over the next couple of weeks. We'll be speaking to our students about internet safety, bullying and mental health. Uh, that should be an outstanding presentation. The food drive continues in support of the Eden North Collins Food Pantry. That continues through next week. Our students are a great job supporting the, uh, this wonderful organization. We have a high school orchestra concert tomorrow at 7.30, um, really looking forward to that. We also have a high school band, orchestra and chorus winter concert scheduled for December 16th at 7.30. Uh, both of those will be in the high school auditorium. So it'll really be wonderful to, to hear our, our student musicians and, and be able to enjoy that. Um, I'm glad Mrs. LaRosa is here because I wanna sing her praises as well as Mr. Walker for organizing a really incredible Veterans Day assembly last week. 
Um, this is the one where, where students invite, uh, it could be a family member or an, an aunt, an uncle, a, grand, a grandparent. I met a great grandparent, which was really, really amazing. It could be a friend of the family. And they have breakfast together and, um, and then there's a, a, um, a presentation in this auditorium. Really, really outstanding salute to our veterans. So thank you. And I know that you're gonna defer the thanks to, to Mr. Walker and the team, of course. And, and I, you know, please share the, the, those thanks on my behalf as well. Um, and I, interesting too, at EE, they launched the grade five buddies program. Um, really neat fifth graders visit uh, uh, an assigned third grader uh, in a classroom a couple times a week to help them with reading and math and, um, and writing as well. And I, 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 I wanna see that in action. It sounds really wonderful. And then this is important too, because this is, this is a really good use of some of those federal monies. We relaunched our com computer club here because we, we were contacted by uh, an entity that, that wants us to help them help young ladies focus on coding. So this is a girls that code club. Um, it's our, it's our, it, that's what the focus is, but it's our regular uh, computer club. So that's pretty neat. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on at GLP and, and Mrs. Carr is gonna be upset that I didn't, I didn't include all of it, but I couldn't possibly, we'd be here all night. But I know your reading night was a, was a great success. I know you were worried because the, the, the response and the turnout was immense, probably better than you ever expected. And so we had families in visiting and visiting stations, attended assembly and a book fair and really celebrating the joy of reading, which is so critical at all ages, but certainly with our, with our youngest students, students as well. And then to, to top that off, you, you went back and had your, your Halloween celebration, including your parade. Um, and what I wanna point out is in all of these situations, we, we, are, we are having some people in our schools, okay? We are back to almost normal, not completely normal, okay? but we're doing it in a safe way. People are masks, we're, at, we're, we're requesting uh, social distancing, and it, it's really been well received. We've had no issues after the fact. I'm gonna knock on wood a little bit here. So, um, you know, I think we're doing things right. Uh, Mr. Iwanka wanted to be here to, this evening, but he, he's home with uh, his little, one of his little ones that has a stuffy nose or something of that sort. So, but he does have an awful lot that he wants to share about our fall athletic program. Holy cow, this is, this is incredible. So boys volleyball, girls swimming and girls cross country, all one division titles. Girls swimming and girls cross, cross country were ECIC champs. Girls cross country were section six class C2 champs. Girls volleyball were section six class C1 champs. Gia Lenz, who I believe is in eighth grade, represented Eden at States, uh, and this is in cross country, and was 41st out of 130 runners for class C in New York State Championships. Really, really cool. They had a clap out for her the other day, which was wonderful as she and if you're gonna talk about this, I'll be quiet, but you should talk about it from a student perspective if you can, where, where the students wished her well on, on, on her journey to the States, really neat. Over 285 student athletes represented Eden in the fall. And then winter sports for JV and varsity started this past Monday and modified starts on the 22nd. So the final thing I wanna, I wanna bring up you up to date on is we will be partnering with North Collins and the Erie County Department of Health to host a vaccination clinic for children ages five to 11. I do believe those ages will, will likely be expanded. Um, this is a first dose clinic and it is likely to be on Tuesday, November 30th from 3.30 to seven at the GLP. More details, including registration information will be shared as soon as possible, hopefully by the end of this week. Any questions? Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, student report, your turn. Okay, I do have two questions. So, did you have like the traffic and Thanks, Jessica. 
That's great. Thank you. All right. Uh, board report roundtable. You want to go first? Oh, sure. Um, just quickly, over the weekend, I was able to attend the uh, Erie County Association of School Boards uh, legislative breakfast, and there was about eight different members of either the State Assembly or Senate there, and um, several, well, probably about almost a dozen topics were discussed. I would say the biggest ones were COVID-related, um, talking about um, ways to keep kids in school and how at this point punitive the quarantining seems to be for some kids and especially those kids who are repeatedly quarantined just from dumb luck um, so there is a push to kind of get a test and stay situation moving throughout the districts in new york which would mean if a kid is exposed they can stay in school as long as they test every day um, which a lot of this you know the representatives seemed open to um, but they are looking for some what they're calling grassroots efforts from the districts to reach out. If that's something that we're interested in to let them know, even if it's from each one of us as board members or we collectively s send letters to them. Um, I'm sure Jeff, you've had a ton of conversations with the superintendents about this, but it was interesting to listen to and just to hear everybody's different experiences with the number of kids they've had quarantined and missing school. And it really is very, it, it's harmful to them and it's, it's hard to see it immediately, but it does build up over time. And I think I would agree. I mean, this is a, if this is a way we can keep kids in school and keep things moving forward, I would be for that. I mean, it's, it's getting crazy for some of them. The other ones were foundation aid, still the big call to revamp the formula, which who knows if that will ever happen. Um, so those are probably the two biggest items on that throughout the morning. Um, and I did have one actually, it kind of piggybacked on what you were talking about. I was sad to see that the Eden Elementary winter music concert was canceled. And I'm sorry to put you on the spot, Kelly, but do you, do we know why it was canceled? It was scheduled for December 7th. Oh, okay. 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 And that's, I think, all I have. Anybody else? Anything? <clears throat> all right. I got a couple things. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate Robert Pierce. Uh, I just I think we found out yesterday. Uh, Robert was uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame for New York Volleyball Coaches Association. Just a little bit about Robert. He's a former Penn State volleyball standout. Uh, he's coached for 24 years here at Eden, uh, 500 victories, uh, nine uh, intersectional championships, um, also very active with, uh, with club coaching. And back in 2017, uh, the Eden boys became the first team, first boys team to win uh, a section six title and then go on to win the overall state title. So no section six team had ever done that prior to uh, 2017. So uh, Robert joins his brother, Stephen, as uh, Eden Coach is honored by the New York Volleyball Coaches Association. So just uh, congratulations, Robert. Uh, Well-deserved. Um, I was actually at a bunch of their playoff runs and uh, fell a little short against East Aurora Holland. So, but uh, good thing. The only other thing I just want to kind of expand off of Jeff's um, comments on, in regards to the capital project. Um, I sit in on most of those meetings. Um, you, everybody's probably seeing right now the whole supply chain issue that's out there. Well, that's been my life the last six months, um, you know, basically dealing with this. So we're going to go out to bid in January, February, and I think we're supposed to do windows in this building. So <clears throat> talking with, with campus and, and Young and Wright, they think uh, we're going to be able to do it but I happen to know a couple things <laughs> and I don't think the window company is going to be able to deliver in 12 weeks. I'm just being realistic here. So the other big problem is, is when you put a window in, you need to caulk the window. So I actually sell product at product um, 
And I've been told the only thing that they're gonna make is clear and white. So we're gonna put almond colored windows in and we're gonna put white caulk around it? I don't think so. So the supply chain, I, I just think we need to temper our expectations of what this capital project is gonna look like. And then for all intensive purposes, we're probably looking at, you know, thought we'd end in 23, it's probably gonna be 24. So I'm just, <clears throat> wanted to kind of give everybody heads up. Um, it, the supply chain is, is, is drastic right now. Um, I've been living it for, for six months now and it's not getting any better for another nine months to a year. And it's, that's just the, the, you know, the honest truth. I mean, you look at the number of ships that are out at, at birth right now, you know, waiting to be unloaded. I just happened to be in Savannah um, two weeks ago one of the biggest ports on the East Coast. And driving over, I don't know if everybody, anybody's been into Savannah, but there's this gorgeous bridge you drive over and off to the right is just the whole port. And you think you just see one after another containers being unloaded, I didn't see one. So I don't know what they're not doing. So the whole time I was there for basically 36 hours, I saw two ships leave the port, half, half loaded. And I saw no, no ones coming back in. So. Just, uh, I just want to temper everybody's expectations of, of this um, capital project as we move forward. Um, it's it's going to be a struggle. So um, to get done what we think we might get done in June of 2022. So just uh, more or less just kind of tempering everybody's expectations of, of where we're at and, and what reality really looks like right now. So um, I think we got another meeting Tuesday <clears throat> on it. So we'll see what happens. You know, we can just move along as it is. And the other thing is um, everybody's seeing inflation right now. So we had a, a, a pretty good cushion in, in for overages and stuff like that. I have a feeling those overages are going to be eaten up very quickly. Um, just the, the, the cost of some products, uh, copper, electrical, uh, cogen is probably going to be double, triple of what we expected. And that's just, and that's something I'm living every day right now. Um, electric motor right now is basically 40 week delivery and pricing at the time of shipment. So just, oh, well, we'll have, we'll have money. Um, but you know, I, there's usually a lot of things we wanna do with extras, but I don't think that's gonna happen this time around. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, you know, everybody saw where everything's at gas wise, used car market, new car market, uh, price of beef, everything's through the ceiling right now. So um, might not be the best time to be going out for bid come uh, January, February, but I think we can rebid things if something doesn't come in our favor. And if we have to delay for a year, we may do that. So it, there's, <clears throat> there's things we can do, but you know, there's, there's a fair amount of extra dollars in there, but it may not be there this time. So we'll monitor it and see how it goes. That's all I got. Anybody else? Okay. The next regular Board of Education meeting is Wednesday, December 15th, 2021 at 7 p.m. in the Eden Elementary School Auditorium. And now... That upon the recommendation of the superintendent, the Board of Education meeting be adjourned. Are we doing an executive session? Yes, we're doing oh, executive. So we should have gone to B, right? Yeah. Don't do that. Never mind that. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent at 7.45 p.m., the Board of Education enter executive session to discuss the superintendent's evaluation and contract negotiations for a bargaining unit. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thanks for coming, everybody.